and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today we are going to be doing another crafty podcast. This is episode number seven for you guys and you have all been so kind um, in your comments on these so I am going to continue on with them. If you're new to my channel, this is a podcast about knitting, sewing, stitching, spinning, um, pretty much anything fiber related, quilting, all of those kinds of fun things and I will break it up into segments so if you don't like one segment you can kind of skip to the segment that you want and I'll put those timestamps um, below the video in the description box so just click the little down arrow I think it's on this side of the screen I don't know there's a little down arrow you can click that um, or you can click show more and then you'll get all of that I will also put links to pretty much everything that I mentioned in this video down there so if there's something you see that you like you can get that information below as well so it's been a little bit over a month since my last podcast and um, I'm trying to get them up once a month for you guys because I also do tutorials and so I have to kind of you know schedule those in um, but also this month just got a little bit crazy a lot of you if you follow me on Instagram Instagram already know but I had unexpected gallbladder removal surgery a few weeks ago and um, it was not something I was planning on doing I had had a kind of cramp in my upper stomach and it was really bad and it had happened before but usually it would happen like after I ate something bad and then I would it would be all night long I would just be up and couldn't get comfortable and in pain and then the next morning it would be fine and so I was like okay well whatever I just ate something um, well this one lasted for about four days and finally I was like okay I can't take the pain anymore they basically found out that I had a huge stone in my gallbladder so they suggested that we get it removed so um, I think I went in the ER at like 9 30 in the morning the ambulance came to transport me to the hospital at about 12 15 I was in surgery by 2 and I was home by 5 30 like it was a crazy crazy, unexpected whirlwind of uh, we did not plan that and me being down with surgery wasn't also <laughs> in the plan so kind of scooted some things back. Um, thankfully I had some videos already planned so um, you guys probably didn't notice too much of a discontinuation in videos coming out. So the good news is that I am doing really well. I'm healing well from surgery and everything is going well. I just kind of have to be careful what I eat now because uh, it can give me stomach aches but Really, that's kind of the main issue that I've had. So otherwise, I think I'm doing good. And a kind of added side effect to that was that I was forced to kind of chill out and rest for a while. And so I actually got a lot of crafting done because since I couldn't really, you know, lift anything or move around a whole lot, um, we were going on walks and things, but then I would have to come back and rest. And so I got a lot of fun things done. So I'm going to show all those to you today. But I did want to say a quick thank you for everybody who wished me uh, well and was praying for me. You guys were so nice. And I did read every single comment that you sent. Um, and I just really appreciate all of your prayers. Um, it was definitely much needed. And um, I'm just so thankful to have you guys as my audience. So thank you so much and I'm doing so much better and let's go ahead and dive into our crafting. So I'm going to start out with my cross stitch because I kind of only have one project that I'm really working on but I am excited to show you some of my patterns. I think I might have shown these last time but just in case I didn't I've got a few new patterns out. So this is a vintage glory. I've also got a vintage Christmas. I did vintage fall and then just released was vintage spring and I apologize these are probably kind of hard to see but if you check it out in my shop you can see um, more up close pictures on what they look like but super cute and I'm really excited to have those out and I did get some new material because I think in the last podcast I mentioned that I didn't like the material I was sewing um, stitching these on and so I did get some new stuff so now I can start working on these so I'm really excited about that and then I have made some progress on this one so I do have a tutorial for this little zipper bag on my channel. So I'm currently working on this. It's by Country Cottage Needleworks and this is part of the Frosty Forest um, series. There's a nine of them in the series and this one is called Snowman's Cottage. So this is the first one I did. I finished this one and then I think last time I was in the middle of this blue house and so I did manage to finish that and it's kind of hard to see but there's a lot of little white up there. Um, you know snowflakes falling and some smoke in the roof and then over the last few days and during my surgery time I sat down and I finished that blue house and then I started on this kind of aqua house and this one is super cute so I've been trying to do all one color instead and I think that's helping me go a little bit faster um, however in doing that I definitely messed up on this <laughs> aqua house a little bit there's a little snowman right here and his little hat was just scooted over one which then messed up this tree and so I had to rip it all out. Scoot it back over a stitch was kind of a bummer. Um, I also miscounted on the door right here so I have an extra stitch right here but I just 
did it all together with all of that brown right there and I just wasn't willing to tear it all out. And so that mistake is gonna stay. Otherwise, I think I've been doing pretty good. Oh no, and I also messed up, I think right here because I was just stitching the aqua and I wasn't paying attention and I missed these little green um, squares right there. And so because again, I didn't wanna rip it all out, I went ahead and just stitched the green over the aqua. And honestly, um, I don't think anybody will even know that I did that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it. I, you know, I'm probably like offending a lot of you long time cross stitchers out there, but it's, I'm slow at doing this. And so if you stitch all of that and then it's like, oh my gosh, I have to rip it all back out to empty out those two holes. It just wasn't worth it for me. And I don't think you can really tell. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's these right here. So there was three little greens right there. And I, like I said, there's blue underneath it. Um, and so I just stitched the green on top of it. Now, obviously that wouldn't work if it needed to be white or something like that, um, but I think it worked in this case. And to the eye, I think it looks fine. I'm going to frame these and hang them on a Christmas tree, so I don't think anybody's going to be inspecting them up that close, but I do have a few mistakes in this one, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and then the other thing that I really need practice on, and I have watched videos, but for some reason, it's just still hard for me are the French knots. And so my eyes and my buttons on this little snowman are just a little bit wonky. As you can see, this eye is obviously bigger than this eye and that's okay. Um, I think it gives him character. Um, because I know that though, instead of doing the buttons or French knots for him on this one, I actually just went ahead and did some little cross stitches on there. I am still gonna have to do his eyes, um, but We'll tackle that when we get there. So anyways, I have made a lot of progress on this and I was keeping it all together because I was thinking I may do it in as a pillow, um, but how I spread them out, I actually have more fabric on this side than on this side. And so I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it as a pillow. I think I'm gonna have to cut them out and just do them as separate ornaments on my tree, which I think is fine actually. Um, I think that'll look really cute and then it won't really matter what order I stitch these in because this house actually isn't supposed to be here. It's kind of supposed to be further out down and I know you can put them wherever you want, but anyways, I think I will probably cut them apart, but for now I'm just keeping my whole piece of fabric together. So that is my cross stitch progress and I'm super excited. I've been doing it at night and I have a new acquisition, which I will show you at the end of all of this under acquisitions on why I can now stitch at night because I found a really good light. I'm going to share it with you and I also have a giveaway for it. So make sure that you stick around to the end of this video for that. Um, but it's really up to my stitching game and obviously during the day we have four kids. I got a lot of stuff to do and so I don't usually stitch during the day, but in the evening is when I kind of sit down and wind down for the day and I like to do it then and I just haven't been able to see but now I can and so I'm excited to share that with you but and then I forgot to mention but you can get these patterns at for, Fat Quarter Shop I'm sure you can buy them on her website as well um, but I just bought them in a kit at Fat Quarter Shop so it came with all nine patterns um, and then I bought the thread separately um, I'm just using DMC I think she has Weeks Dye Works on here as well and DMC uh, mostly DMC, but she has a few weeks dye works on here and I couldn't get a hold of those So I just swapped them out for some DMC. So anyways, this is super fun and cute and she has a lot of different series I'm sure you guys have all heard of her But if you haven't definitely check them out because her patterns are super cute All right, so that is it for cross stitch So let's go ahead and move into knitting and I wanted to show you, I showed you this hat last time, but this pattern is now live. So you can definitely go and check it out if you like. It's a fairly easy cable ha um, hat pattern and I'll go ahead and try it on. I think I was wearing it in my last video because um, I have COVID roots still and actually, hopefully my hair doesn't look too green. It kind of looks a little green. Um, we dyed my hair brown and then because I used a brown or a blue base on the blonde hair it turned a little bit green so we kind of over dyed it with like a red one and that helped but now it's all fading out anyways but anyways that does not have anything to do with this super cute hat so this one is the cumulus hat you can get this pattern on my website I can't remember if I put it on Ravelry yet or not um, if I haven't I'll try and remember to do that for you guys um, but it's really cute and it's just got this basic beanie um, kind of shape it's got ribbing very easy and then it's got a couple different cables and they're just repeated all the way around so if you're new to cables I feel like this is a fairly um, beginner friendly pattern if you will and then it just comes to a nice little 
point there at the top. And yeah, that's it. I knit it out of this yarn that is called Cumulus, which is why I named it the Cumulus Beanie. It's super soft and stretchy and it feels kind of alpaca-y, but it's not. And it does kind of stretch out a little bit. As you can see, we've been wearing it, so my brim's kind of stretched out just a little bit here. But it fits really well and it's nice and comfy on my head and it's nice and warm. So super cute. And I can't remember the colorway. I will put it on the screen below. I think I said it in the last podcast. Um, I think it might be Sandy Castle or something in their Cumulus colorway. This yarn is by Juniper Moon. Um, and so it's really affordable yarn in my opinion. And I made this and then I also made that winter cozy shawl in it. So now I have kind of a matching set. And I think it would be really cute to put a palm on top of here as well. I just haven't. Um, yeah, so that is one of my first finishes. And then next up, I have this new scarf that I'm doing by Knit Collage. This is their Chevron Sunrise Shawl. Here's a little bit closer view of it. And as you can see, it's got this really pretty fluffy hand spun yarn by Knit Collage. And I really like that some of the proceeds for this are helping to support women in India who are hand spinning and dyeing this yarn for us. So very cool. And it's just a really easy kind of Chevron pattern. And I don't think this one was free. I think I did pay for this, but they do have a ton of free patterns on their website. So definitely check it out. Again, that was Knit Collage collage and I did buy um, a mini sampler set and then I had already had a, a spun cloud uh, skein of yarn at home anyways. So here is my box of fluffy yarn and I am using these size 15 needles and they're really nice natural. I think I got these in a kit um, from wool well, I'm sure one of you guys know it. I'll put it on the screen below. But anyways, here are all of my balls of yarn. And then this one down here is really cool. This is their um, fabric. So it's not actual yarn. It's like fabric strips that they turn into yarn and they just kind of tear it, twist it, and then wind it into fabric. And so that's been really fun. So I did use that. Wool in the gang, that's where these came from, wool in the gang. So <laughs> there are these nice kind of natural uh, needles and yeah, super big and chunky. And then here's the progress that I've made so far. So I've got this fun pink color and I love how the hand spun is looking and I may even throw some of my own hand spun in there. And then here's the wallflowers one that I just showed you and this is the fabric strips, fabric yarn. So, and then here is their Spun Cloud one, and this one is Spun Cloud in French Vanilla, so it's kind of a nice creamy color. And then I'm not sure if you can see on here, but there is gold. It's spun, and then it looks like it's plied with really thin gold, so there is sparkle in there. There's also gold in uh, the pink as well. So I've got this much done so far and I'm really liking it. I don't have the en enough for the really big long ones. So mine is probably gonna end up being smaller and I am using more of this just to see if I can kind of make these colors go a little bit longer. So we'll kind of see how it all pans out in the end. And obviously because the yarn is so thick, it goes really, really fast. So I actually haven't spent that much time doing this one, um, but it's just going by like so quickly because it's so chunky. And then I still have these two colors colors left and a little bit left from the blue and pink as well. So I'm going to try and kind of um, maximize it as much as I can and we'll see. Hopefully I have enough to do another full round of each of these colors before I run out of yarn. So anyways, and they do have a, a knit along going on right now as well that has um, another scarf that's their plaid. Anyways, it's so super cute. So I do kind of want to try that as well. So if for some reason this doesn't work out, it's possible that I'll just rip this out and do the pattern for that once it becomes available and um, try that. So there it is. It's the plaid tastic scarf. And so I think that one's also really cute. And I think you only need one skein of spun cloud and then one of their mini kits to knit that. So um, if this doesn't work, I may actually rip it out and try that one, but we'll see. So next up for knitting is my seven sisters top. And this one is by Sloan Gillum Lacase, and I'm using Blue Sky Fibers. I'm using the Called For Yarn. So here is my yarn. It's in the Dusty Miller um, colorway, and I absolutely love it. It's super chunky and soft. So here is my progress on that. So I am fully done with the body. I do need to knit this arm, and then in the pattern it had um, short sleeves, but I decided I wanted a long sleeve, so I found a website where I can put in how many stitches I was starting with, and then how many I wanted to end with, and then it kind of told me how to do the decreases. So it was super handy. And if I can, I'll, um, I think I just searched for like knitting 
arm decrease calculator or something. It wasn't anything complicated, but I'll try and find it and link it below if I can. But anyways, I think it worked out really well. I've tried it on and the sleeves seem to be fitting quite well. Um, I did have to modify it a little bit because it got kind of tighter down here towards the end, um, but now it's good. So I ripped it back. I ripped this sleeve back three times now guys to make it the right size. So I think we're good now. Um, and then here I've got just this ribbed cuff and I'm almost done. I need to try it on. I want to make sure that it's long enough because one of my all time pet peeves is when you um, have sleeves that are just too short or like when you go like this, the sleeves pull up and they just, uh, I don't know, it drives me crazy. So I want to make sure my sleeves are long enough. So I'm making a little bit longer cuff on it. And then yes, I did write down all of my notes on this so I can repeat it on the other side because I would not remember, especially after ripping it out like three different times. Um, so anyways, but I think it's turning out really good and I am almost done with this sleeve. So then I can come over and do this sleeve next and yeah, I think it's going to fit in everything. I've been trying it on as I go and it fits really well. It's definitely um, on the kind of baggy side, which is fine. I kind of prefer that. And it'll be a just nice chunky sweater to wear over like um, leggings or, you know, my skinny jeans or whatever. And it's also really nice and soft. And so, um, yeah, I like the weight of it. I like the drape of it. I feel like it's turning out really well, especially for my first sweater. And then down here at the bottom, it has this really chunky ribbing again. And has it on the neck and then like I said you were supposed to start ribbing right here for your short capped sleeves but I don't like that look on me anyways and so I went ahead and added a sleeve so I'm super excited and since this yarn is so chunky this actually goes quite quickly um, so I should be done with this hopefully by the next podcast actually I'm hoping to be done a lot sooner than that so I can actually wear it because it's starting to get cool here but in any case here it is love the soft kind of muted gray mixy marled colorway that it is and I'm just really excited to have my very first sweater almost done I kind of never thought I would knit a sweater because I'm just kind of more of a um, instant gratification type knitter. I like hats and scarves and shawls and things that I can just, they're not huge projects. Although I have discovered that shawls are deceiving because they don't look like huge projects, but they do take a long time. So whatever. Anyways, I'm excited to have my first um, sweater done. And then I am doing the sleeves on my uh, Knit Picks Zing, Knit Picks Zings, I think is what they are. So these are size eight and then I also knit the body though on my chow goos because my chow goos are my all-time favorite and um the cord the red cord I mean it doesn't twist it doesn't get tangled it just kind of holds its you know lets you do whatever you want with it so if you're new to knitting I know they're a little bit probably more expensive than some of the other needles but this cord in my opinion is worth it and actually the tips are also great so i do have an interchangeable set of these they're my all-time go-to favorites and if i had to buy them again i would definitely do that because these cords you just can't beat these in my opinion so anyways that is that and i'm hosting that got yarn everywhere and that is just living in my little bag here um, this is a free pattern on my channel as well What's it called? Erica's Craft Bucket or something. I'll try and link it below. So the next knitting project I have is kind of exciting because I decided to go ahead and take a class and try and step up my knitting game. I have done color work before, but I wanted to get a little bit more, uh, a little bit better with my tension, just how to manage my yarns. And also I wanted to learn a new technique. And so I went ahead and took a cell boom mitten class by Nitography Farms. She does video instructions, which are very thorough and detailed. She also hosts live Zoom calls. So if you have any questions or problems, you can ask her, which is super helpful. And then she has a blog where lots of people can comment. She posts information and you can see other people's comments and questions um, and all that. And then at the end, she did this really cool um, national mitten day thing where everybody could kind of post their pictures and just see um, all about that. The classes are also not only knitting classes, but there was a ton of historical information on Selbu mittens and just the people and the place and all of that. So it was actually a really cool learning experience. Um, I went ahead and chose this pattern. This is Sildra by Skein Deer Knits. And as you can see, those patterns are really fun. And um, I think it's just really cool. It's just a different style. I also had no idea how to construct a mitten. And so I wanted to learn how to do that as well. Um, and I definitely did that. I'm still, I'm not done with these yet. My class is officially over, but you still have access to the videos. Um, so I still need to work on the thumb, but I will show you that in a second. 
So here are my yarns, and these are both Shelter by Brooklyn Tweed, and I have one in the Snowbound colorway, which is this lighter one, and then the black one is a cast iron colorway. So they're really nice um, complementary colors, I think. She did suggest that you don't use Superwash. She suggested something a little tackier, um, more, uh, you know, kind of grippy wool. So these definitely are. These are a little bit thicker than what my pattern called for. So I knew my mittens were gonna turn out just a little bit bigger, which is fine. I really just wanted to um, get the technique down. And actually they still kind of fit. They're just a little bit big on me. Um, they actually fit my husband quite well. Um, so here is my first one. It hasn't been blocked or anything. And I, like I said, I'm not all the way done, but the cuff, as you can see, has this kind of traditional striped cuffing. And then there's the traditional flowers um, shapes that they put on. And I guess every one is different based on their farm. A lot of them had their own um, uh, like like brand or logo, I guess you could say, for their farm. And so um, I guess that's what kind of inspired this. And then here is the palm, and then here's where my thumb will go. So like I said, I haven't done my thumb yet. These stitches are just resting on um, a little bit of yarn here, and then I will pick up these to finish off the thumb. And one of the things with the Selbu mittens is that this pattern will continue seamlessly on the thumb, and then when you flip it up, it has this pattern, and then there's like usually a little bit of a special flower or message on your thumb. And then one of the other cool things that I love about these mittens is this ladder that goes up the side and then all the way back down the other side. Um, and so that was actually really fun as well. So they look complicated and there is a lot of color work on these, but um, it wasn't too bad. And with the video lessons, I really felt pretty equipped to be able to do this. And then another traditional feature is that they come to this kind of point up on the top. So I have this one almost done. I just have to finish the thumb. And then I've got my second one started. Um, this is just on holders. I do not like this... Um, Addy cable, unfortunately, these are my Addy. I think they're like, you know, Addy rockets or whatever. The cable is just not. I mean, as you can see, it's snapping back. I knit this one on my chow goos because the cable is just a lot more pliable, like I mentioned um, in my sweater video. And so this is just being held on here, and then I'll transfer it over. And then once you get to the tops, you do need to use. Um, double pointed needles. So, but anyways, this is super fun, and I'm really glad that I took the class. As you can see. I'll put it down here. Um, they do fit me. Um, they're just a little bit big, and I think when I block them, they'll be even bigger. Um, so I think they'd probably be more for like a man size, just based on the yarn that I used. If I'd used the right size yarn, then I think we'd be okay. But this is what I had in my stash, and it went together. So I think it turned out pretty good, and I'm really proud of myself for even getting this far. I just need to get my thumb done and then finish the second one. And anyways, very fun, and I'm really excited that I took it and that I've gotten that far. And then I am housing that in my, um, this is my Amalfi tote bucket pattern, and this is a free pattern on my channel as well. And this is probably one of my favorite knit project bags, and actually it's kind of like purse size even, um, because it's just nice and big and open and there's pockets inside and I can kind of keep all my stuff in there. So, And then the last thing I want to show you is kind of a sneak peek for you guys because this pattern is available in my shop. I just haven't announced it on my blog or any of my social media, so you'd kind of have to stumble upon it, um, but it is available. So last month I probably showed you and told you I was going to work on it, but this is my Knitmas cowl and I did this last season with my yarn ink advent calendar and so a lot of the dyers put out advent calendars as you probably all know and you get 12 to 24 mini skeins of varying colors so you can kind of pick your own dyer or you can just use whatever mini skeins or leftovers you have in your stash but I did this pattern for last advent and then I also made this super cute matching beanie. And so this is my Knitmas beanie pattern. And I put this adorable fluffy palm. This is from Life's Little Things Co. Palm. And I will actually have a giveaway coming up for her soon. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but anyways, it matches and I just think it's super cute. They go together really well. And I love doing the knitting advent projects because it gives you something fun to look forward to every day. You get to open your little mini skein and then add it to a fun project. So here is what it looks like on, and as you can see, I think this palm just kind of makes it. You can add some more of these layers. Each little section is a different texture, just like on the cowl. And so you can add more or even take away one if you have kind of a smaller head, and um, or if you want it slouchy, you can add more. You can add the palm, you can skip the palm. It does have a decreased top up here. So if you don't want to put a palm on it, um, it'll look cute without it. Um, but yeah, so I think these are going to be really 
really fun um, advent projects for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. And this one and this one are both in my shop. It's the Knit Miss Cowl, the Knit Miss Beanie. And then I think if you buy them, not from Ravelry, but from my shop, you get a 10% discount if you buy one and um, get the other one, you get, I think, a 10% discount on both patterns. So. And here's the crazy thing. I held, so my skeins were fingering weight. I held them double because I wanted soft, squishy, um, and warm for my hat. Um, and I still have all of this left over. So this was 24 mini skeins. I got my entire cowl and my hat out of it. And this is what I have left. Like I can, I mean, I can still knit a whole nother cowl, I think out of this. So, um, my rows might be skinnier, but <laughs> honestly, there is so much yarn in those mini skeins. It's like, um, you know, deceiving because you get them and you're like, Oh, that's not that much, but then look at all of this. So anyways, super fun and exciting. And I hope you guys enjoy these projects. Like I said, I'll put a link for where you can get these in the description box below the video. Um, but they are available now, even though they haven't gone officially live on my social media. So that is all I have for knitting. Let's go ahead and move on to sewing and quilting. And I have a lot of tutorials that have come up since my last podcast. A couple that I wanted to do were just to make some basic things because I get asked the same questions a lot. And so I wanted to have a couple tutorials that I could just send people to. So the first one is my how to make quilt binding tutorial. And so I showed how to make this cute little roll of quilt binding. And if you're new to quilting, quilt binding, I'll show you in just a second, but it's just the, the binding basically that goes around the outside of the quilt to cover all of the raw edges on your quilt sandwich. And so you can make these yourself. You can buy them in the store, but honestly, I don't know if I've ever actually bought one because I like to customize mine to my quilts so they match perfectly. And um, if I don't have the exact, I'll just make them scrappy and make them just really fun and unique. So I really enjoy making my own. So how to make quilt binding is already live, I believe, or I think it will be if it's not. Um, and then the other one was how to make bias tape. And I just store my bias tape once I make it on these little boards and these are comic book boards that I cut into three by five shapes um, and then I just wrap them around and you can just tuck these all in a drawer so once you need um, binding you can go and just pick out the color you need and it's the same thing that I use on these down here if you can see any of those white um, um, boards down there I use it to hold my yardage as well because it's just nice and stiff and it kind of holds its shape and helps your fabric stand up so both of these are available quilt binding and bias tape um, if you're new to um, sewing also bias tape I show you how to make single fold and double fold bias tape. So this is a super handy thing to have. And I know a lot of people are using this to make masks right now as well. So both of these tutorials are currently live. My next tutorial that I put up for you, and this is actually one of my favorite ones, is this super cute um, apron. And I think this will make really great gift ideas for the holidays. And I made this using the Sweetwater Sweet Tea fabric. Sweetwater fabric is probably one of my all time favorite fabric lines. I pretty much love everything that they put out. And this Sweet Tea line was no exception. Um, and it has different little um, shops and coffees and, you know, soda. And it's just like the cutest fabric. And then it had this accent navy. So um, I do show you how to make this. This is an adjustable apron. So this kind of slides, I show it better in the video. <laughs> I'll put in it, I'll maybe see if I can insert some footage of my daughter wearing it, but this can kind of slide up and down. So, you know, if you're taller or shorter, and then of course it comes with these ties and you can put these the size you need so that you can tie it around whatever size body you have. Um, so all inclusive for the apron. And then it has this cute little pocket in front for some of your supplies. So I'm really excited about this video. It is live and it's super easy and fun. And I think a, a handmade personalized apron would be such a fun gift. And then you could kind of wrap it up, put it in maybe a mixing bowl with some other supplies, maybe a recipe book or something I think that would be a really fun gift idea for the holidays so and these are very easy to make I also show you how to make it with your own strap but you can also do um, some uh, just the pre-made cotton webbing and then it's like super fast so very easy and true to form I think I called this Erica's easy <laughs> apron tutorial so the next project that I have is this fun heating pad and this has some cute cotton fabric on one side 
Then it has this soft chenille on the backside, so it makes it really comfy and cozy and it holds the heat well. Um, and these are really cool, so you can make these also as gifts. Um, my daughter made a few of these, gave one to my husband, she has one, I have one. Um, but you can use these as heating pads around your neck, you just pop them in the microwave, they're filled with just regular rice. Um, or you can also stuff them with pillow stuffing and make them into a travel pillow as well, so you don't have to have the heating pad element. I will say that when I had my gallbladder surgery, well, I didn't realize it was my gallbladder. I thought I had just eaten something and I had a really bad stomach kind of slash side ache. And so I heated this thing up and I had just put it over my side and just let it lay there. Um, and just the weight of it and the warmth of it was one of the only things that sort of helped the pain. I had tried all kinds of things and had I known it was my gallbladder, I probably would have, you know, maybe looked that up, but I didn't know. I honestly just thought I ate something bad and um, bothered my stomach or something. So, so anyways, this was really helpful during that time, but I think it also makes really good gift ideas. And like I said, you could also make it into a travel pillow if you don't wanna do the rice heating pad option. So I also did a tutorial for these really fun burp cloths. You can totally customize them. Again, they have a fun fabric on the front. This is all Bonnie and Camille fabric for Moda. And then on the inside, they have that fun chenille as well, which is really nice and absorbent and super soft for baby. So I made a stack of these. You can definitely customize them for your recipient or make them for your own baby um, and just make them match whatever you want. And then you can kind of bundle these up and give them as a little gift, maybe in a diaper basket or a bag with some extra you know, goodies and supplies that they might need for their baby. So I think this is a really fun idea. And then along these same lines in that tutorial, I also show you how I can alter it and make it into this really cute chenille again um, lovey for your baby so we just added some of these fun little ribbons all around along the edges and then again a nice cotton and chenille so it's nice and soft and washable um, and I know babies love to play with these little things on the edges so just two tutorials in one for this I thought it would be really fun and make really good gift idea and then my last tutorial was this one, which is really fun faux fur pillow. And I just did this one using some faux fur from my local craft store that I got. Of course, you can order it online as well. And then I got this, I think these are like one inch palm trim on it. And so I show you how to add the trim to it and make this super cute and easy pillow. And you can totally customize these to match your houses. My daughter is going to actually snag this one and put it on her bed because she recently, um, Katie, the little one who you've probably seen on here is just growing up way too fast. And she's recently decided that her room is too little girlish and she wants to kind of give it a new vibe. And so we got her some really nice, clean, white, crisp bedding, and she wants it to be all nice and fluffy and just cozy. So anyways, she is going to take this, um, but this tutorial was a lot of fun. I wanted to be able to show you how to add trim so it doesn't have to be palm trim. It can be any kind of trim you want. And just be able to make some fun decor for your own house. You can really use this tutorial and make any kind of pillow that you want. By the way, if you have a tutorial you'd like to see, make sure to leave a comment or send me an email because I do take suggestions and you know, if there's enough interest in something, I'll definitely film it for you guys. All right, and then on to one of my most favorite projects that I've done recently, and that is my new quilt pattern. This one's called Farmhouse Fall, and it's just absolutely adorable. It's definitely beginner friendly and easy, and it just features these cute kind of scrappy pumpkins and scrappy leaves. And then I did put some po posts in between, poster just these little squares in between the blocks. And then I did a scrappy border around the edges just because I thought it was so cute. So this one is really easy. It um, takes one fat eighth bundle um, along with about two and three quarters yards of background fabric. It finishes at 57 by 71 and a half. But one of the cool things about quilts is you can add or take away any of these blocks to make it larger if you want, and you can really customize it to your needs. I made this using fig tree fabrics. These are some fabrics I had in my stash from their farmhouse collections. And I think I combined their farmhouse one and two collections for this quilt. Um, and I absolutely love it. So here it is live. So you can kind of see it. I'll maybe insert some video if I can, but, and then by the way, you guys, I totally messed up on this quilt and I didn't even realize it. So I'm gonna show it to you on here on YouTube because I just wanna point out that everyone messes up on their quilts. I get a lot of emails from people saying that they're worried they're gonna mess up and blah, blah, blah. You know what, just do it. No one is gonna care. I didn't even notice until it was completely quilted. And so I'm obviously not gonna rip it out now. Um, and then even my quilting, I always mess up somewhere on my quilting. So I did a fun kind of swirly design on this 
this one. And sure enough, I ran into the other swirls where I wasn't supposed to somewhere in here. But you know what? You literally will never see it, especially once you wash it. So if you've been too scared to try quilting or you're worried about messing up, you know what? It's your quilt. People are going to love it. You're going to love it. It doesn't matter. And here we go my epic fail on that blue. I don't know where I got that extra um, half square triangle from. If you don't see it, it's this one right here. It should not be there. That should just be a white square. See like the corner of this one right here. So that little guy should not be there. And he is, and it's okay. I'm learning to love him and I'm leaving him in because there is no way I'm ripping. I mean, I don't even know how, there's no way I'm ripping this out. It's not happening. So anyways, but here it is. And here's that cute scrappy binding also along the edges. I just think that's so adorable. And then here is one of the pumpkin blocks and they're just scrappy, fun pumpkins. And just for a little bit of a twist, I did blue pumpkins. I can't remember what they're called here. Somebody told me um, there actually are like these kind of aqua -y colored pumpkins out there. And so I just thought that was so cute. So I did the blue and the orange, but of course you can do whatever color you want. And then I did a mix of red, blue, orange, and green for the leaves. And then I just used all of my leftovers for the posts and for that scrappy binding or scrappy uh, border right here. And then I also did this polka dot black for my binding. And that's the quilt binding that I just kind of showed you. That's what binding is on a quilt. And then I had this kind of brown in my stash and it's just, it's kind of blowing out a little bit on my screen here, but it's just a nice kind of beige um, uh, plaid on the back there. And so, or gingham, sorry, not plaid, gingham on the back and so i just had that i thought it kind of matched the fall vibe and i loved this black binding with the little polka dots and all of that fabric except for this backing all the rest of this fabric is from fig tree for moda and i just think it's so cute um, and you can also just make one block if you want to try it out. I have measurements in there um, for cutting measurements for if you just want to make one block or all of the blocks that are included in the quilt. And so it makes it really easy. And so I do that because, so I do that because I like to use my quilt patterns to make other projects. So I'll just make one block and make something fun. So this is a little pillow that I made and I used the um, a mix actually of Cori Yoder lines. So this one is her Ash and Apricot line that just released and then these blue ones are from her Sugar Creek line. And I think this gray binding is also from her Sugar Creek line. Um, and then on the back, I just used some print. This is Pam Kitty um, like newspaper print um, that I've had in my stash for a long time and I just made it into a pillow backing. And I will show you how to do this on my blog. That post is coming up here shortly shortly if it hasn't already released, um, but you can take a quilt block and then make a matching pillow for your bed. So I also made this really cute table runner doing the same. So I made two pumpkin blocks like you can see there. And then I did one leaf block for the center. And then again, I just did that gray binding and the same um, kind of newspaper print on the back. Um, of course, you could do however you wanted. You could do it in a square, make four blocks and put them in a square. Like if you have a round table or a square table, um, I have a long skinny table, so this fits on it perfectly. Um, but like I said, you can really customize your quilt patterns into fun other smaller projects like this. And so that's why I always give the quantity for one block or the quantity for all the blocks in the pattern. So I think that makes it really fun. And like I said, I will show exact measurements and what I did for my table runner and the pillow in a blog post that will be um, coming soon. I think it'll be up before this video goes live, but it's really not that complicated. You just make the blocks, sew them together and add some binding and you're good to go. And then lastly, I just wanted to share my farmhouse fall pattern because this is one of my best selling patterns and I thought you guys might like to see it if you haven't already. Um, this is one of my favorite quilts and it's this one that's behind me on the wall back here. Um, and so I always get questions on that and all the quilts linked behind or behind me on the wall will be linked in the description box um, of all of my videos because people always ask those. So these are my two kind of fall quilts that I have right now and I love them both. And I'll probably pull that one down and put this other one up here pretty soon just because it's so cute. And then it's going to be time for Christmas projects. I do have a couple of things for spinning to show you, so I'll just go through those really quickly. So this one is one that I finished, um, I think last time I showed it, I had it half spun up and then um, I still have the other half of the bat to go. So this is my own creation. I put this bat together on 
I carded this bat on my new brother drum carter and I've shown that on Instagram as well. And I do have a video on how I put it together. Um, but basically I just did a nice white. I think I did kind of a mixture of bamboo silk plus just some merino just to kind of fill in. And then I added some gray. Um, and honestly, I got the gray at a convention and I forgot to write down what it was. So I'm not 100% sure what it is. And then I just added in all of these fun little color sparkles. So I think this one will be really cute. I think I'm gonna go ahead and plan a hat for this one. So I'm either gonna ply it back on itself, I haven't 100% decided, or I'll add in possibly a white um, hand spun with it. So I haven't 100% decided what I'm going to do as far as plying this. It's just been resting on my bobbin for a little bit and I need to figure that out, but I'll show you guys that next time. But anyways, this was a hand spun, hand carded um, bat, and I'm really excited about how it turned out. I love the colors. I think it's gonna be, um, it's being really cute. And then here is my next one. And unfortunately, the way I spun it, you can't really see because underneath here is also pink and purple and some sparkles, but you kind of can't really tell because the blue sort of took over. But this is another hand carded bat that I did on my brother drum carter and if I can find one I will put a picture of what the bat looked like before right over here on the screen so you can kind of see it um, because it does have some lovely pink and purple and this aqua color in there and then I did a lot of white as well and then hopefully you can kind of see some of these little bits and bobs in here that I threw in that give it a couple you know some extra fun little color pops in there so this one was actually really fun and it ended up being more I packed a lot on my carter that time I've been not doing quite as many I've been doing like two bats and then blending to them together, but I'm like, I'm going to just see how much I can get on here. Anyways, I just packed it down kind of a lot. And so when I went to go spin it, it was really almost kind of not felted together, but it was stuck together. So I had to kind of pre-draft it first. And, um, but I think it still turned out cute and it is still nice and soft and it'll be really fun when I get this off of here and I'm going to apply it back on itself. So you'll get some of that fun barber pulling and mixing of colors. And now I have to do that because I literally have three skeins on bobbins right now and I only own three bobbins. So I'm going to have to probably wind these into a center pull ball and then ply them back together just so I have enough bobbins to be able to do it. So I think I need to get some more bobbins. Anyways, these are my two recent spinning finishes. All right, guys, I think that is it for all of my sewing projects. And now I have some acquisitions and then I have some really fun giveaways for you guys. And I also wanted to mention to keep your eye out because I will have my 2020 holiday gift guide coming live soon. And if you're new to that, it's where I show all of my favorite gift ideas for your quilty and sewy friends. Oh, knitting and crochet. I have, I have lots of stuff this year actually. And I do giveaways for everything that I show in the video or pretty much everything. Yeah, I think I have giveaways for everything. All of those gifts are coming in and um, you didn't see it because I cut it out of the video, but my son came in with a pile of boxes that just showed up today. So I have a ton of vendors sending me a ton of fun things to give away to you guys. So definitely stay tuned for my 2020 holiday gift guide because you are going to love it. All right, so let's move into acquisitions really quickly. And I did want to I did want to show this. It's not super duper exciting, but I did get two cones of Aurifil thread. This is my all time favorite thread. I use it on pretty much every single project. And this is in the 2021 colorway. And it's just a nice kind of creamy white colorway. It's not super bright white in your face. It's just nice and just, um, yeah, creamy white. Anyways, I did get two cones of these. They last a very long time, um, but with the Aurifil shortage because they're in Italy and COVID and all that stuff, I just wanted to make sure I didn't run out for all of my Christmas sewing that I have to do. Um, so color 2021 in a cone. So the next thing I got was this really pretty All Hallows Eve by Fig Tree. And I wanna say that this line actually came out before, but I think they reprinted it, which Moda almost never does. Um, so All Hallows Eve, and it's just a beautiful bundle. I don't plan on making any more fall quilts right now out of this. However, I did want these colors in my stash because this orange is absolutely perfect and I'm always running out of grays because I use grays for like tires on my trucks or chimneys or or, um, you know tree trunks or whatever and so I really wanted to get a handle on those grays and then they have some really great low volume prints in here and then some fun blacks so so this is my All Hallows Eve Fat Eight the Bundle and then I can't remember if I showed this last time or not I don't think I did because I think it came in between but I did get a bundle of Christmas fabric this is by Cori Yoder and this is her Holly Berry line and it's just so pretty. And I was actually considering making a vintage Christmas quilt out of this, but I think I, I have a new quilt, Christmas quilt pattern coming out soon that I'm working on. And so I think I am going to use 
this for that. And I did put up a poll on my Instagram and a lot of you wanted the new quilt out of it. So I think I'm saving it for that. So I will be using this fun fabric right here for the actual uh, quilt. And then I'm gonna be using this one for the background. So this is just a really light gray cross on there. And I love using really low volume prints for the background. If I don't use this, I, I get a lot of questions on the white I use, like the white, oh no, there's not white in that one. On the white that I use, I'm um, like maybe on the spools quilt up here. I always use Moda Bella Solids 9900-97. It's my all time favorite white and I have bolt of it over there. I always have a bolt of it. Um, but I thought for this Christmas one, I would like to do this. So I know it's probably looking white for you guys right there, but it does have those really cute little um, gray uh, crosses on it. So that'll be my background fabric. Then I'm gonna be using this nice kind of beige holly berry print for the backing. And I just think it's just nice and Christmassy, um, but subtle, and I think it'll just complement the quilt really well. And then on top of that, I will be using this one for the binding. So binding and backing right there. I think it's gonna be a really cute quilt. And then of course, um, these fun bundly Christmassy colors for the rest of the quilt. All right, and then along the lines of fabric, I um, Poppy Cotton did send me this. This is their Dots and Posies, and it ships in January 21, um, but I can start showing it to you now. So that's always really exciting. So this is a sneak peek of their new line that's coming. And I really love their lines. They're just so pretty and, um, I don't know, they're just adorable. Um, so I'll just go ahead and run through some of these really quickly for you, but they have this really cute kind of gingham-y um, with, gingham print with uh, these little roses. So there's a couple of that one, pink and yellow. And then there's some fun dots and some fun florals. I think this is just a really sweet kind of spring, fun spring line. And it's got these blues, some yellows, some fun kind of pinkish, kind of a pinkish coral color in my opinion. Some stripes, I'm running out of hands. Here's some more pinks. And then of course, these lovely blue colors. So dots and posies coming soon. And I will have some fun projects with this pro, um, this line as well coming soon. So, so they did send me this to check out and I'm really excited to make some fun projects and videos for you guys using their new line. So the next thing that I got, and these were sent to me by Apple Pops, and these are the cutest little rings. So what they do is um, make perfect circles for applique. So you pick a size ring that you want. Say I want this size circle. Then you pick the dot that's just slightly larger than that. So then you put this dot inside the bigger one and kind of press it, and then you can press it using your iron, and they also suggest using starch. And then when you pop it out, you have an absolutely perfect circle for applique projects. And so I thought this was a really fun idea. When they send them to you, um, they send them in a kit. So there's, I think, I think there's two different sizes, um, and I just have them hang on my wall, so I just have one size here to show you. But they sent me two different kits so that um, I didn't have to wait when I was making, say I needed to make a bunch of that size or something, I could have a few more kits um, to make them all at once. So, And I do have a giveaway for these, so I will give information on all the giveaways that I have at the very end of this podcast, um, but stay tuned for that because I think these will be a really fun addition to my sewing room. All right, and then the next thing I got was Yarny, and this was um, a beanie bundle from Life's Little things co um and this is their franca um mano state uruguay, uruguay and this is 100 percent superwash merino in the solana colorway and so here it is it's such a beautiful light blue and it's got some yellowy green speckles in there i think they're yellow they just kind of look green where they overlap a little bit and then with that kit came this so it's the prettiest light blue color with some of these black kind of tips on it. So they go together really, really well. And I will have a giveaway for one of these kits, plus a pattern coming soon for my 2020 gift guide. So little sneak peek for you. And then I also got this palm from her shop, which is a lovely light kind of gray color with those fun black tips on it. And, and this one. So there's different sizes. I think this one is their extra large and this one might be their large. Um, my tags, fell off, so I'm not 100% sure which ones these are even. These palms are amazing, and look how big and fluffy they are. They're so pretty. So I got, so I have these three palms and this cute bulky um, yarn all from Life's Little Things Co. And like I said, I will be having a giveaway for one of her beanie bundles, plus a pattern coming soon in my 2020 gift guide. So stay tuned for that. Um, you'll get one of these yarns, plus a palm, plus a pattern. 
So the next thing I got, this isn't super excited, but if you remember from last podcast for my own cross stitch patterns, I had started stitching on a fabric that was kind of a blue tint white and I wanted something a little creamier white. So I did find this. I will try to link it below. I just got this from Joanne's website and it's soft and easy white, 100% polyester, 14 count, um, just basically Ada cloth. And it came in a huge, it's like 48 by 60 so I can cut it down and make it the sizes that I need. Um, and so it's stiff still. Um, but it's a really nice soft kind of creamy color the one that I was doing before really had a blue tint to it and I did not like it so um, I'm hoping that this one will look better and I can start stitching my own cross stitch patterns so the next thing I got and I will be having a giveaway for one of these as well because I think they're just so cool is this Taylor's clapper now there's other companies that make them but I happen to get the Riley Blake one and it's basically just this wooden block and if you don't know what it is it's to help press your seams and keep them nice and flat for quilting so basically what you do is you'll press your seam and then lay this on top of your seam until it cools and this in combination with the wool pressing mat which I'm about to show you um, as well makes for really nice flat seams and that can really help out if you have a lot of seams coming together um you know if you have like kind of a busier quilt yes Jax, do you need something Jaxie, no Jax wants out this podcast is getting way too long for him so anyways, I will have a giveaway coming up for my 2020 holiday gift guide for one of these, but I did want to show it to you today because this is the coolest product and I don't know how I hadn't heard of these before. I saw it because um, Fat Quarter Shot had it on one of their videos and I was like, oh, what's that? And so I started doing some research and I was like, hmm, I want to try that. So here it is and I'm super excited to try it because it works really, really well. And so I definitely wanted to add this in my holiday gift guide for one of you guys because super excited. So stay tuned for that. My next acquisition is going to be for an upcoming tutorial and I wanted to try to sew with this waxed canvas. But it's just like a harder, it's been waxed. It's canvas that's been waxed. And so it's got a really kind of more structure to it. And I think it'll be great for one of my project bags. I also got one of these short handle, um, leather handle kits from Coco Knits because I want to try those out as as well. So I will be doing a tutorial for this soon showing you how to sew with this fabric and how to add um, a fun handle. Now you don't have to use this handle. I just thought, thought it would be kind of a fun, um, a little bit of a different video to do. So this will be coming soon. I did just get this in the mail, so I'm really excited to try these out. And then my most recent acquisition, and I'm really excited because this company reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review their product, plus do a giveaway for one of you guys. And of course I do, why would I not? So we are gonna be doing a giveaway for this. This is um, by, I don't know how you say it, it's O-U-T-X-E, Outdoor Extreme Energy, wearable fan and light. And actually I got the light version. So here is what the box looks like. Here is what the product looks like. So it's a little bit crazy and my kids think I'm nuts, um, but it comes with this little charger. So I'll take that off here in just a second, but it's just a USB charger so you can plug it in, you know, however you plug in your phone. And then these down here on the end are lights and so you can basically put it on goes really well with my hat I me mean, my hair kind of hides it so it's not that crazy and then there's just a little hopefully I don't blind you guys there's just a little button here on this side that turns on these lights so it's got three different strength lights off on medium and then low and then they also have another version that has um, goes from blue to a warm tone light I actually did not get that version I think they might have sent me the wrong one because he sent me an email saying it had all that and this one doesn't this one just has the regular um, kind of white lights but this is a game changer as far as my my cross stitching in the evening goes because it just hangs on my neck I can they're adjustable so I'm probably blinding you guys I'm sorry but you can make them go whatever way you want they are just a nice thick cord here and then you can um, aim them to whatever project you're working on so I'll just have these on have my cross stitch down here and I can see so much better of course I still have to wear my glasses <laughs> because I'm getting older and I'm blind so this has been a total game changer for me for stitching at night and I suppose you can use them to do anything they also have so also they ha they also have a fan attachment so to get the light off you just turn it and then pull it and it just has a little USB connection there and so you can put a fan on instead and then you just turn it and it locks it back into place so I do have a giveaway for one of these for one of you guys for today's podcast as well. So I have three giveaways for today. So I'm going to mention the last one and then I'm going to tell you what you need to do to enter all the giveaways. And then my last product for giveaway today is my wool pressing mat here. I gave away one in the last two podcasts and I have another one. This is sponsored by the complete boutique and this is a 12 by 18 inch wool pressing mat. So this combined with the Taylor's clapper is perfect for flat seams. It also comes with this cute little notions pouch and inside are some scissors, some pins, and I think a tape 
measure. Um, so I have one of these kits to give away for you guys as well. So I want to say thank you to all of my sponsors for making some fun giveaways for you. So let's just recap for my three giveaways today. I have one of these wool pressing mats. I've got um, a set and it's actually a double pro set of these apple pops for one of you guys. And I have one of these um, neck lights for one of you guys as well by Outdoor Extreme. So three fun prizes. So leave me a comment below letting me know um, one of the things that you are just hating the most about COVID aside from the serious fact that I know there's lots of people sick out there and we just pray for those people on a daily basis. But just one of the little things that just really been getting at you and bugging the heck out of you, just get it out in the comments, um, keep it G rated. Um, but, and then also let me know which one of these things you'd like to win. That way when I pick my three winners, I can hopefully get you what you're kind of after. So maybe list them in order, like I'd like the wool pressing mat or this or something like that. So you've got the wool pressing mat, a set of apple pops or this fun neck light from Outdoor Extreme. Leave that in the comments below and then I will pick three winners and list them in the next podcast. Now I do have my winner from last time and for this wool pressing mat, it is Natalie Butler. I will put your name up on the screen here and I did comment on your comment on my YouTube YouTube video so that you know that you've won, but I don't really have a way to get a hold of you. So I need you to send me an email. You can send it to Erica at confessions of a homeschooler.com. Let me know that you won the wool pressing mat from this month's podcast giveaway, and we will get our prize out to you ASAP. And then lastly, do not forget to stay tuned because I probably my next video coming early November will be my 2020 holiday gift guide. I have a ton of great gifts and prizes and giveaways for you guys. Like so many vendors participated this year, I'm really excited um, to share some of my fun, favorite crafty goodies with you guys. So stay tuned for that because that will be coming next. If you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. And I then know to keep making some fun tutorials and podcast videos for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me for today's podcast and I will see you next time. Okay, we're ready. We're ready, Jaxie? All right. Hi, and welcome to another podcast. This is, hi, I'm back to, oh, okay. <laughs> it's been a bit, just give me a sec, okay. So it's been a little bit over a month since my last, since my last pod, um, I could go in the details if you want, but basically your gallbladder delivers bile to your intestines, which helps them um, d um, digest your food. And if you don't have that and you eat something really like fatty or like, like fried foods and things like that, it would normally like deposit like at a more like specialized dose of bile to your intestines. It's not there to do that anymore. So your liver has to kind of make up for that. So you kind of need to get your body back into a sort of a new normal mode. So they did laparoscopic surgery. So um, all of that is healed up. Is this too much information? Maybe I shouldn't say all that. There's, ah, sorry, let me try and hold this up better. And then here, oh, that's the back side. Uh, these are my, what are these? It's, it's whatever they're, I can't remember what it's called right now, but they're plaid um, scarf. But it's like plaid, knit collage plaid something. The thumb, so I've obviously got, focus. Along this, the, so along those same lines, oh, I need to cut off these threads. Okay. Take 25. Oh, you're on your ball, that's fine. Scratch away. Ooh, blowing it out. Blowing it out, there we go. Super easy, another super easy, and um, another, so just another, ah. So this is an All Hallows Eve Fat Eight, a Fat Eight, <laughs> Fat Eight. Jax is getting feisty back there. He's clawing my quilt, cool. stop it. All right, the next thing that I got, and Apple, Apple Dots, Apple, is that what they're called, Apple Pops? Apple pops. So I got these three palms, plus this, pl <laughs> and I'm eating fur. <laughs>